All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to this Athenian Stranger tutorial video series, where today we are going to be looking at a segment addition postulate problem for geometry. I want to thank the student that brought this problem to my attention. It was actually one that we both struggled with, and uh, I wanted to bring this video to you today in case you were also struggling with this concept. Okay. Let's read what we're given and look at the picture. And if you have not already, I would like you to pause this video, take out a piece of paper or open up your math journal and recreate this geometric construction right here, okay? I want you to stop and get out a straight edge and a pen or a pencil and draw what you see because I, I really need you to work this out on paper. You can't just watch the video. As uh, my algebra teacher told me, math is not a spectator sport, okay? So you can't just sit and watch. Please pause the video, and once you are ready to continue, hit the play button, okay? So I'll assume that you've, you've already copied this down, and we'll get started. So we are asked to find SR. Well, what is SR? SR is actually a distance. So it is the distance here from this point to this point, from S to R. And right now, that distance is being defined by this algebraic expression 2x plus 28. So we've got to find out what it is with a, a numerical value, with no x's, okay? We are also given that segment RQ is equal to 2x plus 32. And most importantly, we're told that the entire segment, the whole thing, the composition of these two smaller segments is equal to 12. That's going to be super important. It is important at this point to remember what the segment addition postulate tells us about this problem we're faced with right now. What it says is that the total length of a line segment is equal to the length of the little pieces that make it up. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm paraphrasing it there, right? But what it means is the full length right here, S to Q, from S all the way to Q is equal to 12. And that that must be equal to the sum of these smaller segments, SR and RQ. Okay? So let's set up a, let's set up a sentence uh, that uses some math symbols that actually expresses what we just said. What it says is that SQ, okay, SQ is equal to SR plus RQ. Okay, that's what we just said. We said that SQ, which is now represented by 12, the distance from S all the way to Q is, is equal to the sum of the small segment SR plus the segment RQ, okay? And this is proved by the segment addition postulate. So in geometry, the big thing is you've got to, you know, justify what you're doing. So the segment addition postulate justifies this sentence right here. Okay, so what should we do next? Well, what's going to be important for us is to substitute for these line segment letter names, the actual values were given. So we are given that SQ is equal to 12. So we can say 12 is equal okay, to whatever SR is. SR is 2X plus 28. So we'll write, instead of writing SR, we'll write 2X plus 28 plus RQ, okay? The distance from R to Q, which is currently represented by 2X plus 32. So right here we'll write 2X plus 32. Okay, now what remains for us is actually just an algebra problem. We've got to solve for X. Okay, that's that's the first step. We're gonna 
That's not the last step, but that's the first step. So to solve for X, there can be a whole host of intermediate solutions that gets us to X. In other words, there's a whole bunch of steps you could take. So if your solution method is different than mine, that's okay if we both arrive at the same value and we've, we've both followed the, the rules of mathematics. So if you would please pause the video now and try to solve this yourself with pencil, something you can erase or use a piece of scratch paper to solve this equation for X. Okay, well, if, if you're coming back to the video now, uh, I'm going to assume that you've come to an answer for X, and I'll now show how to solve for X. So in order to solve for X, we have to get X by itself on one or the other sides of this equation and get everything else on another side. Okay, so we've got to get X by itself. Well, all the X's are over here on the right, so we'll leave them there, okay? So the first step we're going to do is get rid of these whole numbers here. We'll start with 28. Okay, we can subtract 28 on the right side. And in order to keep the equation in balance, we have to subtract 28 on the left side as well. Okay, we'll see what we get here. On the right side, 28 minus 28 is 0. And 12 minus 28 well, we have to do that subtraction, right? So we have a problem. You can't use the subtraction algorithm you've been taught to subtract a larger magnitude value from a smaller magnitude value. So what we're going to do is off here to the side, we're going to flip those numbers around and do 28 minus 12. Okay, let's see what we get there. And when we get our answer, we're just going to put a negative sign in front of it, right? Because we know the answer is going to be negative because this value that's negative here is much larger than the value above it that's positive. Okay, so 12 minus, 28 minus 12. 8 minus 2 is 6. 2 minus 1 is 1. And we put a negative sign in front of it. Okay, so we'll go back here and write negative 16. That is 12 minus 28 is equal to negative 16. All right, so let's rewrite what we have so we can clean this up. We have negative 16 now equal to 2x plus 2x plus 32. Okay? Okay, moving right along. Our next task will be to subtract 32 from both sides. So we'll subtract 32 on the right, and we'll subtract 32 on the left. Let's see what we get. On the right, 32 minus 32 is 0. On the left, we have negative 16 minus 32. Now, number sense, the concept of, of kind of understanding how numbers work, should be telling you right now, I have, I'm at negative 16 on the number line. And I'm subtracting 32, so I'm going to the left on the number line from negative 16 down 32 more places in the number line to the left. So the number that we end up with is going to be a larger magnitude negative number. Okay, So it's going to be negative, but it's going to be bigger than negative 16 and negative 32. It's going to be the sum of those two numbers, 16 and 32, with a negative sign in front of it. So now we have to essentially add 16 and 32 and then put a negative sign in front of it. Okay, let's do that. 6 plus 2 is 8. 1 plus 3 is 4. Okay, so we have negative 48. All right, make sure you're tracking with me. If you haven't, pause the video, back it up. Make sure you're, you're right with me here. So let's rewrite. Negative 48 is equal to 2x plus 2x, okay? Negative 48 is equal to 2x plus 2x. So on the right-hand side, we need to combine like terms because we have two x values with coefficients. So we can combine those, those two terms since their variable is the same, okay? So 2x plus 2x, you add the coefficient. So you add 2 plus 2 and then put an x in front of, uh, behind it. 
So 2x plus 2x is 4x. So we'll write negative 48 is equal to 4x. All right? Now, to get x by itself, we've got to do the opposite of whatever is currently being done to it. So right now, 4 is being multiplied by x. So to get rid of that 4, we have to divide 4x by 4 and negative 48 by 4. Remember, what we do on one side, we must do on the other in every case. So now, we're, we can divide 4 by 4. So that cancels out, leaving behind little 1s that we don't write. And so we've essentially isolated x on the right side. Okay, so something equals x. Well, what is that? Negative 48 divided by 4. All right, if you can't do that in your head, we can do a little division problem right here. And we've got 48 divided by 4. Okay, negative 48 divided by 4. The answer, the quotient, will be negative. So... How many times can 4 go into 4? One time. 1 times 4 is 4. Okay. And we subtract those. 4 minus 4 is 0. Bring down the 8. Okay. How many times can 4 go into 8? 2 times. 2 times 4 is 8. There's no remainder. So negative 48 divided by 4 is negative 12. So x is negative 12. So we found x, okay? That's very exciting. But it's actually not what the problem asked for. Okay, the, the problem asked us to find the distance sr, this distance, okay? So x is, is going to be useful for finding sr, but it's not actually what the problem was asking us. So we are given that the distance sr is 2x plus 28. All right, let's write that over here. SR is equal to 2x plus 28, right? And we'll write and x equals negative 12, okay? So what we need to do is substitute negative 12 for x. All right, so we'll do that now. SR, we'll write SR equals 2, and then we'll put open parentheses, and then put that negative 12 in there where the x used to be. Negative 12, close parentheses, plus... 28. All right, so now we just need to follow PEMDAS, parentheses, exponents, multiplication, division, addition, subtraction. Okay, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. So we need to first do this parentheses. What is negative 12 times 2? Okay, negative 12 times 2 is 24. So we can say SR is equal to negative 20. 4 plus 28. Okay, so now we just have to add together negative 24 and positive 28. We know we're going to end up with a positive number because 28 is bigger than the negative number. The positive number is bigger than the negative number, so you're going to end up with a positive number. Negative 24 plus 28 is positive 4. So SR, the distance from S to R, is 4. And that is the value we were seeking. All right. That is the problem. So I hope you found this problem useful. If you did, give the video a like, leave a comment, and if you haven't already, please subscribe and hit that notification bell so you are always alerted to new videos on this channel. Thank you very much.